some of you, probably, seeing the title of my speech, have wondered what exactly is sustainable agriculture and why does it sound like I'm from Alabama and about to farm your lives away? You know the term sustainability and agriculture, but you expect the mix of those to be both boring and complicated at the same time. Well, let me reassure you that sustainable agriculture is exactly what it sounds. The way of farming that ensures practices safe for the environment, as well as those that make the best use of non-renewable resources. In my speech, I'm going to focus on one of the main dangers of uns unsustainable agricultural practices, which is biodiversity loss. If any of you does not know what the term is, it is, again, pretty straightforward. It is the process of decline of the variety of living organisms inhabiting our planet. To put it to simple terms, while um, some species dominate over the others, some simply go extinct, and this process has been induced by humanity without irresponsible actions. Now that I introduce to you the proper meanings of the terms I used in the title of the speech, I should probably introduce myself. Um, hi, my name is Olivia Bundera. I'm currently in the first year of the IB Diploma Program, and I consider myself to be a young and hopeful em environmentalist. Um, I am a graduate of the 2023 United World Colleges Building a Sustainable Future short course, and when I tell you that this course changed me, I am not exaggerating. I became more engaged in advocating for change than I have ever been, and only because of that engagement, I am standing here in front of you, giving this speech, full of passion and hope that my words can influence at least one person in this room. I realize that some of you may still not know why I would get, choose to give a speech oriented around this particular topic, instead of tackling the problem of irresponsible actions uh, inducing climate change as a whole. Well, there are two reasons for that. The first is that the problem of irresponsible actions inducing climate change is way too big of a topic to even begin to describe within the time frame for an average TEDx talk. The other is that I just love numbers. I am taking the most advanced math course available at my school. I genuinely enjoy solving calculus problems. And when I see some statistics, I become obsessed with them and what they mean. And some of these statistics blew my mind away this summer. So now I want to share them with you so your minds can experience being blown away as well. And to talk about uh, sustainability in agriculture, we should know where agricultural practices can even take place. So let us imagine the world is an apple. Um, so technically, we could use all of the apple's surface for farming. However, we have to remember that the majority of our planet is covered with water, that there is land that we are not able to use to harvest plants, land that is covered by mountains, forests, desert, that day by day we are taking over more portions of fertile land by inducing urbanization and expanding infrastructure. After we are done with cutting our apple to the point where we can see what represents the surface we could actually farm on, we are left with barely 10% of what is classified as agricultural land by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the, Uni of the United Nations. And the problem that I will talk about today is how the 10% we are left with is being used. The majority of the crops harvested in the area are grown in monocultures, which is when there is only one type of crop being grown at the time on a specific field. And this might seem like the easiest way to make the most profit with the least effort. However, it is also the most damaging to the environment and fully contributing to the consumerist lifestyle our society is so engaged in. A majority of European crops come from uh, monocultures and are not harvested for the use of people, but for the glorious purpose of meat production. And this might seem justifiable to some people, although the effect meat, meat consumption has on the environment could be whole, a whole another TEDx talk topic. Um, however, Europe is horrendously overproducing meat and dairy, with production of various meats up to 16% higher than their consumption, and the production of dairy around 14% higher than its consumption, as reported by Greenpeace. This makes the effect it has on biodiversity even more striking. Because of the undying desire for meat and its continuous production, the biodiversity chart for mammals looks somewhat terrifying. Humans make up around 36% of all living mammals, and that makes sense, there are a lot of us, a billion, that's a big number, um, and you would expect the farm and the wild animals to place over the remaining 64% around equally. Well, I have to take that beautiful image away from you and bring you back to reality. A wild animals, as of right now, are only 4% of all living mammals, more and more of them going extinct as the ecosystem is changing because of our actions. And the last 60% of all living mammals on Earth are only farm animals, but purely for, for the satisfaction of the humankind. And the biodiversity across mammals isn't the only one affected 
by the monocultural farming. Our forests are being cut down, killing out various species of uh, plants, insects, and small animals. And uh, because we are uh, destroying their natural habitats, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm speaking a bit fast. Um, and if you know about the circle of life or the food chain, you know that even the most minor changes in the ecosystem can influence horribly um, the rest of the species. And what is even more ridiculous is that the cut down forests are sometimes being replaced with other trees, usually planted in monocultures. So we are going back full cycle, degrading the soil Mother Nature gifted us and slowly running out of resources on our planet. However, we are not out of options. There exist some agricultural practices safer for the environment and the only thing standing in our way of using them is capitalism. Um, so, uh, because monoculture farming brings the most money, as plants are easy to grow and control, pesticides are easy to choose because there is only one 